I guess I'll start a few seconds early so you get that good view. This will just be a little... I'm heading to where this... You know, it feels like it's about 80 miles an hour. We'll talk a little bit about environmental things as soon as I get out of here. I read uh, on the local news, I read something on KIII TV, I believe it was, about our air quality. Worse than New York, Chicago, things like that. It talked about the poor environmental things going on in our area. And I know a lot of people would be surprised. Uh, that was on, I think, KIII. So we have some of the worst air quality in any city, U.S. of A. It's another thing that should be, people should be aware of. My daughter, uh, Bethany, had asthma. She was a good swimmer and all, but she had a lot of problems with asthma. It, it, that, that speaks of like economic and environmental things that take place, judgments. I want to do a little thing on... Uh, Mr. Gonzalez, the DA and the Mathis cop story. <laughs> you say, John, but you defended me. What I defended to uh, the DA, who's a servant in this community, what I defended was that the Calder Times put on Mark Gonzalez, in my view, too much of the weight upon his shoulder to coordinate. All agencies should coordinate. But they did a critique. They said in his acknowledgement of failure, he made another failure. Now, I will say this. The acknowledgement of failure in the initial thing was not enough. Because it's possible that there was favoritism shown to a Mattis comp. Mr. Mark Gonzalez, the DA of Nueces County. I know he didn't realize that he'd be getting into this much stuff when you become a top official in this community. But with a lot of the history of Nueces County known as being the second most corrupt by a national ranking of lawyers, but they had no pet peeve to pick, that ranking was when people are put out by the Bar Association law to be aware of where you're going, and number two is Nueces County in the U.S. of A. Meaning, with that type of a history and background, anybody that becomes a DA with the promise that I'm going to clean up what happened in the past, Mr. Gonzalez, most of you know, instituted a pretrial diversion program to for misdemeanor felony, uh, misdemeanor domestic abuse cases, and the idea was to try to help misdemeanor abuses, not people that choked out their wives or girlfriends unconsciousness. Misdemeanor abuse would be a bad thing, but you hit, you slapped, or something of that nature. Most times it's a husband and wife, a boyfriend or girlfriend. Tragically, we've had murders. Some of those cases are coming up, actually. But Mr. Gonzalez said when he got in office, he was going to try and institute that. Now, the Colder Times did a good job in investigative journalism. They showed, they went and he would have never revealed that, Mr. Gonzalez. But out of all the cases, there might have been, uh, in, within a year period, maybe five, six hundred, something like that, half of them might not have ever made it to trial or anything. And then the other half, out of all of those, there were only two that had the offer of pretrial. One was a form, uh, former Hooks Class B baseball team out of Corpus Christi, fine team. Da uh, Danny Vasquez, the video surfaced where he hit his wife, or his fiance, it showed it in the thing. But then the other was a felony choking case by a police officer. Now, I'm sure that police officer had represented representation that coordinated with Mr. Gonzalez's office, and whether he coordinated Mark Manning and, or whoever the other DA was prosecutor, there was an offer made for a felony choking that he would get off scot-free and become a cop again, had to attend the thing. So it's possible in all this atmosphere of national, let's get all of the, you know, texts and emails. 
What we would like to know as a community, not just the acknowledgement of failure, that the program didn't work, but the possibility, if you will, of collusion, favoritism shown to an officer with a, uh, he should have had a felony charge that would have at least prevented him from still being a cop. So that's a little more than the acknowledgement of failure. We as the public in the community of Nueces County and Corpus Christi would like for Mr. Gonzalez to explain how those dealings went, not just that it was a failure. Caller Times said it looked like it was favoritism. Now that's one of the problems when you talk corruption in the broader range of many stories I've told for many years out here. Corruption is a community or an area where there are connections, whether it's a Judge Benyalis with the history, and even the colder times did that by advocating and covering up. So, you know, I posted that. The colder times in defense of themselves, like a month ago, had an article that said, we have been around 1800 and something whenever the colder times was established, a local paper. And it felt like they were offended. Like, who does John think he is? Or who does a citizen, a blogger, think they are? We've been around and we You've been around for nothing. You know, I've been around forever. God says, before the foundation of the world, he chose his people. And a little, a puny, we were established a hundred years ago. That's nothing. That's nothing. And I, I, when they did that, it was like they were saying, look at our foundation. It's crumbling, your foundation. The people of God and the voice of God, that's been around forever. I like John about this. He described himself, who are you? He didn't even know some of the prophecies, the famous prophecies of John. Are you the Elijah that should come? No, no, I'm not. Yes, actually, John was. John the Baptist was the fulfillment of the Elijah prophecy. Jesus himself said that in the gospel. But John didn't know, recognize it. They said, who are you? He said, a, a voice, a voice. Now, you can chop my head off, John the Baptist. You can take his head, but the word of the Lord goes forth. So those who find, oh, we have such a stable, we've been here for 107 years, that's nothing in the sight of God. You are nothing. You're like but the word of the Lord, the kingdom of God. That's been around. And I, I remember when that came up. There are some national things. I, it was just, I'm not going to do the other one that everybody's talking about. There was a story that Mueller is thinking of going after Ivanka Trump. And you know, I've covered... The history of Mueller, how they did a lot of crimes out of the corrupt Boston FBI office, movies about it, black mass, Mr. Colony, uh, Connolly, FBI guy in prison, or went to prison, Whitey Bulger was on the run, famous thing, they caught him out west, California, but can you imagine, you had all that stuff going on in your, in your investigative thing, people wearing badges, and some of the most corrupt criminal stuff you've ever seen in your life from people wearing badges. They caught a famous serial rapist and killer. He's like 70 years old. There's a particular name, I forgot what they call him. He was a cop. All those years killing, rape, and murder. Famous case. I, I didn't follow him. He was a cop. No longer, but a DNA thing show. Of course, they're all not that way. But with people, when they're going to locate to region, you keep promoting. There certainly has to be more of an answer than how did the one case out of the two that escaped justice out of the domestic violence cases in Oasis County, how was one of them a felony choking case and that thing, that guy got off and is a cop today? Even if he pled justly and righteously and had a felony thing, he would have no longer been an officer, which would have been to his benefit and to the lady that he choked, as well as to the community. So out of all the cases, it showed 
that there was something wrong there. And what we, the public, want to know is how did you arrive at that? Because when people are going to relocate here, they're going to want to know ahead of time. Okay? So that's the word of the Lord. I made a little note on the video I posted today, earlier, the teaching post. And I gave that three pence coin. I had a friend, Arthur, give me a coin that said three pence. I was talking to my friend Charlie the other day. I felt, oh, let me turn on the camera. I named it like three pence coin or something. And I gave it. And, you know, right after that, there were three earthquakes that struck just north of Corpus Christi. They weren't big. They were three point something. But I just felt it was interesting. I would simply say, Mr. Mayor Joe McComb, we have what's called the Buccaneer Days thing going on. It's a famous annual celebration, kind of like the pirate thing. I'm not against it. It's, I used to go to it. I don't know if I'll make it this time. But Mr. McComb jumped off. They have the mayors, like, walk the plank. You know, it's, it's fine. It's like games. I heard he landed face first in the water, like it looked bad. And it's a sign. We are playing little pirate games, and you've got real stuff going on. So now people got to deal with all the other stuff. Plus, your kids are going to get very sick because we've got one of the worst environments, air quality, in the U.S. of A. Is your word.